Okay, so last but not least, uh, SDN platform, we talked about most of that. So again, intro, Marcus Nispel running VP, uh, running solutions architecture and innovation at Extreme. So we want to talk at, at the end, wrapping it up in our SDN platform and, and what our thoughts are. <clears throat> As we discussed most of that already uh, over the last one and a half hour, even more than that, I think we can quickly go through it, <clears throat> but I just wanted to touch on a few points. Um, that were still up for debate. So <clears throat> SDN platform itself, so we, as I stated before, we really want to become one of those uh, um, network-centric SDN platforms that the industry will converge on. We are going to use uh, Open Daylight as one of the key components to it. A platform for our, from our perspective is, but it's just more than the controller itself. It's the whole ecosystem that will make the difference. The ecosystem in terms of what tools we provide, what controller capabilities we provide, what kind of support we provide, what set of validated solutions we provide as, as part of that. And let's face it as well, you, you, someone mentioned it before, why don't we just uh, open up everything and everyone um, creates their own controller, their own distribution. That doesn't happen in, in the Linux world either. You, you don't build your own distribution typically. You go to someone who builds a distribution for you, provides a set of interesting and value-added tools, provide services to it, and that makes a difference. And that's why you choose that specific provider for a given solution. And we do envision that the same thing will happen here uh, in that market. And again, we want to become one of those uh, providers. So um, that's just an important statement uh, uh, up front. Uh, we also talked about the evolution of, of SDN from very even claim to be open, but still either vendor specific or when you look at the initial set or, and wave of uh, open flow based controllers, still open flow controller centric approaches into a more open architecture that we are embracing here that allows you to use multiple different southbound interfaces moving forward. And on the northbound side, we think that uh, the industry will converge over time on a set of northbound APIs that allows that application portability that I talked about before. So you're really open uh, from, from uh, both ends of the spectrum, southbound infrastructure and northbound on, on the application side driving those. A little bit more details on our platform itself. Um, what we've shown before was basically that side of, of, of the solution where we use NetSide and OneFabric Connect to integrate with uh, third party IT systems for automated onboarding, location analytics, and, and things like that. And driving those appliances underneath Purview, our application analytics, NAC, our access control solution, and the identify controller solution. So over time, that it's going to be integrated with the Open Daylight based controller architecture. So we will have a set of east-west mappings in terms of APIs that allows us to exchange certain data sets. So looking at one controller, one controller also, the Open Daylight based solution also tracks hosts. There's a host tracking table in Open Daylight. We track hosts in our NAC and system database. So there are obviously synergies. There's topology here. We maintain topology. There are obviously integration points here. There are policies being driven on our side. There are policies or affinities in Open Daylight, so we'll bring those together over time. And Open Daylight, as stated before, has a lot of architectural advantages from our point of view. And the, on the southbound side, you have that um, abstraction layer southbound, so you can plug in different southbound protocols and you can still provide similar services. And obviously on the northbound side, the flexibility that we talked about as well. So basically that makes up our platform plus what I mentioned before, um, the solution ecosystem, the uh, community, the support, the service components that are part of that platform as well. So it's not only about a pr product, it's about an entire offering. Yeah. And as part of that, we will also integrate our existing uh, techn technology ecosystem into that, interfacing with our OneFabric Connect component that is part of the SDN platform itself that allows us to provide value in, in different areas of, of the network infrastructure, both in the data center where everyone's talking about uh, SDN, but also and specifically in the area of mobility uh, convergence and uh, uh, management as, as well as uh, analytics. 
And one component uh, where we will provide a sneak preview of what we are doing here is how you intelligently combine that platform with other solutions like uh, Microsoft Link. So I talked about a lot about MDM integration, onboarding. Link is obviously a, a, a UC solution that allows you to collaborate more effectively uh, across the entire infrastructure. It has specific requirements on the underlying infrastructure and with an intelligent SDN based integration you can dynamically assign quality of service profiles to uh, UC sessions, you can provide unified reporting and also additional contextual um, reporting that goes beyond what each and every of, of the solution components would be able to provide. So and this would be a really good example of something you couldn't do with an extreme, without an extreme switch in the middle. Right, because it says right there, QoS profiles are assigned and torn down on extreme OS switches. So, I mean, that'd be a really good... Yeah, so that would be one use case, but uh, if you look at that, so we are also working on open daylight and open flow based implementation of that, and then you can use any kind of switch underneath, so... Or well, it wouldn't be tied to that, it's just... Oh, that goes back, that's a good example on the different Southbound APIs that you can use. You can use an Exos based uh, API that we have today, um, or you can use moving forward OpenFlow as another protocol to do the same thing, to basically inject a, a dynamic uh, classification rule for a given flow that allows you to, to dynamically prioritize link. And that would be in infrastructure depend independent then as well, well. Well, I think that's sort of what Keith was asking originally, right? So yeah. if, you've, if you've got a, if you've got a um, um, uh, identify appliance and, yep. uh, and uh, an extreme AP, but you've got a link to switch in the middle from, yep. you know, 2002, yep. right? D clearly this isn't going to work. Yeah, so, but I said it's a preview, so that's yeah, sure. not released yet, sure. and I yeah, stated yeah. Fair, to fair him enough. that all fair of enough. the existing implementations <laughs> that we have today are not relying on our infrastructure, but you're right, yeah? Good catch, actually, so. Um, Okay, and uh, many from, from my team will do a quick um, demo actually on how the link uh, solution looks like. So just to wrap it up, uh, SDN will evolve in, into the mobile world. We talked about it. It will take a while uh, until we get there. There are a lot of new things that you need to take into account as mobility and, and the mobile world, the wireless world has uh, a set of uh, additional attributes high rate of change, very dynamic, roaming needs to be managed, a, a much larger number of network elements that need to be managed. So network, network abstraction might look different uh, in that mobile world. Uh, we want to become one of those uh, platform providers in that new market. And uh, what I also stated very early on in the day, it's about the entire solution app, control, network element, validation of those and the management system surrounding it. And we talked about it, it goes obviously beyond the data center. Yeah. Before, before the next, um, how long would you say in number of years before you believe you can confidently stand up in front of an audience like this and say, SDN is a mature product? Just, just because there's a lot of lofty yeah. stuff flying around today, yeah. right? So, so are, are you talking one year, two year, five year, a decade, two decades? What, what's your personal view of? Baked. I think it depends on what baked means. I you, think, whatever you define as baked. So what, what I think will happen over the next uh, 24 months, you will see that SDN becomes more deployable in specific, very focused and tailored deployment scenarios. So you can go into production uh, from that perspective. Um, as it relates to wireless, um, the campus infrastructure, it's probably uh, uh, two to four years before we see something that is like deployable in any uh, scenario. Yeah? If you look at what we are doing today with One Fabric Connect, it goes back to how do, how do you define SDN. We do have today more than 100 customers at least having uh, one Fabric Connect in production, um, which we consider an SDN solution that is northbound centric. So that's the production ready and deployed in production. If you look at those emerging technologies that we talked about, it, it's a few years out. And in between, I th we think we have specific descriptive scenarios and use cases where you can still deploy it in production. So it's a journey over the next few years for sure.